Hi yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through a pretty deep yin yoga class. So some pretty intense stretches. Um, you'll probably wanna have two blocks for this class. And we are going to begin in a variation of saddle pose. So I'm gonna do this one with blocks. You might not even need them at home. I just know that for me, this is a challenging one. So I like to use them. So instead of beginning with both of our knees bent and the feet pointed back, this is like reclined hero pose, but we're gonna do it one leg at a time. So you can extend and reach your left leg out in front of you and then bring your right foot back. So right knee is bent and you wanna try to keep your thigh bones parallel with the longer edges of your mat. Knees are about hip width distance apart. And as you bring that leg in, see if you can get the top of your foot to be flat on the floor as much as possible. And then you might lift up and tuck your tailbone under a little bit as we start to lower down. So this is where the intensity definitely begins to increase and intensify. So as you lower down, you might want to use your blocks, one of them underneath the upper back and the other to support the back of your head or the back of your neck. And if the flexibility is there, you might even be able to lower all the way down without the use of props. Or you might decide to stay up on your forearms or up on your arms, whatever feels the best to you here. So looking for a nice big opening through the front of our right thigh. So in yin yoga, we hold our poses for three to five minutes, which means you really wanna take the time when you're first setting up to find the most comfortable version of the pose for you. One that you will be able to hold for that extended amount of time. So if this feels too intense right now, if you have a hard time breathing deeply, or if your muscles are tensing up, you might need to boost yourself up a little bit higher. And you can choose where you want to bring your arms. You might even bring them up overhead if you'd like, or down alongside your body. And once you've found the variation of the pose that feels the best to you, where you can find your edge, Try to relax fully into the earth and just breathe slow and steady.
your arms were reaching up overhead like mine, you can slide your hands back down. And we'll lift ourselves back up, tuck chin into your chest. And lifting up nice and slow. You might just straighten your right leg. Maybe bending the knees a little bit, whatever feels intuitive to you here. And we'll move to the other side. So go ahead and bend into your left knee. So again, our thighs, thigh bones, femurs parallel to the longer edges of your mat. And you want the top of your left foot to be flat on the floor as much as possible. So toes touching. And you can lift and scoop the tailbone under slightly so that you're really getting a nice opening and stretch into your quads, into your hip flexors, and then lower your way down, maybe on forearms, maybe on some blocks, maybe not. It's totally normal for one side to feel different than the other. So give yourself just as much time to readjust and to explore. As much as possible in yin we want to relax our muscles so that we can work instead on connective tissue so on our joints the tendons and the ligaments and we can only really work on those tendons and ligaments on those connective tissues by holding a pose for an extended period of time and by also relaxing our muscles. So in a pose like this, we're working not only on the quads and the muscles of the thigh, but we're also really working on the knee joint and our left hip joint. And for some people, also the left ankle. And if you have your arms up overhead like me, You'll also be working into your shoulders and along the spine. So just stay with your breath and settle as much as possible.
your arms were up, slide them back down. And we'll come out of the pose again here. Curling up, take your time. Use your hands to lift up. And whatever feels good and natural for you here, just to release. And so our next pose, you can flip over. It's a variation of frog pose, but really it's like reclined butterfly, but done on our bellies. So no need to have the blocks for this one. You're going to lay all the way down on your stomach. And then as if you were doing a butterfly pose, you can widen through your knees, bringing the soles of the feet together. And for some people, the feet just drop right down towards the floor. This is a really difficult pose for me. So as you can tell, my ankles are up pretty high, but over time, they'll start to lower and make their way down. And you can really do whatever feels the best for your head and for your neck, maybe turning one ear to the floor, or you can just pad your forehead with your forearms or your palms. And I know this is a really intense asana. Although depending on your anatomy, for some people, this is also extremely easy. So everyone is different. But I know for me, this is an area of weakness, which is why I try to practice this pose on a regular basis. So see if you can keep your feet together and try to relax the muscles in your legs. Breathe into your belly. And if you need to come out earlier, if you need to release the pose, remember you can always do so. This is your practice. You have to do what works for your body.
So from here, just go ahead and straighten your legs. And you can bring the legs and the feet closer and together. We'll give our lower body a bit of a break, just coming up into Sphinx. Propping yourself up on your forearms, pointing your toes back. Think of rolling your shoulders down and away from your ears as you lengthen out. And you're almost pushing into your pubic bone a little bit here, reaching your tailbone towards your heels and broadening through your chest. lower down just press up onto hands and knees we'll be coming into swan pose which is just pigeon pose but the yin yoga name for it but because this is a deep stretch yin yoga class i'll give you the option of going further into it by incorporating thread the needle this is one of my all-time favorite variations so starting off for swan you're going to bring your right knee behind your right wrist and you can go ahead and extend your back leg further out. So if you're up really high, this is where you might wanna grab your block and just prop it underneath your hip so that you don't have to contract your muscles to hold yourself up. Remember, we're trying to soften and surrender as much as possible. So the first variation of swan pose, normally we would just fold down or maybe prop ourselves up on a block or two. You're welcome to do that. If you'd like to go further, you can add the thread the needle variation by reaching your left arm underneath you so that your left shoulder and left ear either come down on the mat or again, you might lower on a block if the floor is a little too far away. Your right hand can push into the floor a little bit to help you rotate and twist a little deeper or you might bring your right hand behind you, maybe catching a hold of your right foot. So take your time to explore these options. Remember, you can just do a regular pigeon pose if you'd like, or maybe you add the spinal twist to go deeper into this one, maybe with or without some props. But once you've chosen what works the best for you, try to relax. See if you can take longer, deeper inhales and even slower exhales.
If you were holding on to your back foot, let it go. Coming out of the twist first. Like propping and lifting up. And just press back, tabletop pose, whatever feels good here to get the blood flowing again down that right leg. I'm just noticing the difference from one side to the other. Maybe some hip circles. And we'll ease over to the second side. So this time your left knee aligns behind your left wrist and you can stretch that back leg behind you maybe propping yourself with a block or a blanket underneath your left glute. And you might simply fold here, or if you're adding the thread the needle variation, this time your right arm slides underneath you, shoulder and ear to the floor or to a block. And maybe you push with your left hand or you bring your left hand to your low back or reaching for your left foot.
and release the hold of your foot. Bring your hand back, lift on up. Just like before, tabletop pose, whatever feels the best to you here. And we'll give our lower body one more break, focusing on upper body. So we're gonna come into our puppy pose stretch because this is a more advanced, intense yin class. I'm gonna do this one with blocks to make it a little bit more challenging. So bringing the elbows down to the blocks, palms together. Keep your hips over your knees. And as you soften the forehead down, you can bend your elbows, reaching your thumbs towards the back of your head, back of your neck. And right away, you'll know if this is too much for you, in which case you can just do this pose without the blocks to make it a little bit easier. So try to melt and relax your heart down towards the floor. Try to melt your thumbs towards your neck. So really working on shoulders. No tension in your upper back. Just slow, steady breaths.
and straighten the elbows mm, and lift all the way back up and you can move your props out of the way we're just going to lower down onto our backs pull your knees in towards your belly and you might widen your knees here taking a little happy baby pose stretching everything out so happy baby normally we have our knees bent with the feet stacked on top of the ankles again because this is a more intense yin yoga practice if you'd like you can do this with your legs straight and not in this one for quite as long try to keep your tailbone pressing into the floor Bend your knees, the legs were straight, letting your feet come back down to the floor. And you can just do a little windshield wiper motion with your knees here. Just releasing your lower back. Any other movements here that feel good to you, that your body needs before we make our way to Shavasana, our final resting pose. Go ahead and take up some space and get really comfortable. Shrugging your shoulders down and away from your ears, palms facing up to the sky. And surrender fully with a big exhale. Giving yourself these few minutes of stillness so that you can really integrate all of this deep work that we've done.
start to breathe deeper, inviting some energy and movement back into your body. First through your extremities, down your legs, down your arms, big stretch as you reach your arms overhead. And you can turn to one side. We'll lift up, taking a seat. And really just sit any way that is comfortable for you here. Close your eyes, hands at your heart. And just feel how your body feels right now as opposed to when you first started this practice. And we'll close with the chant of Om. Inhale to chant. Big breath in. Om. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis. I hope you enjoyed this practice. If you would like to practice with me every single day, you can click right here to join the free morning yoga challenge a 30-day program and if you'd like to practice a little longer today then definitely click on this video here to follow it up with an affirmation meditation thank you so much namaste